G'day guys. Soft shackles are becoming more and more popular. More companies are making them, more people are buying them. But there seem to be quite a few misconceptions about soft shackles. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of soft shackles, the pros and cons of bow shackles, and we're also gonna try and clear up a few misconceptions about soft shackles. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into talking about the soft shackles, we need to talk a little bit about safety. So, recovery points. If you go out forward driving, you should have proper recovery points fitted. This is a factory tie-down point. It's made for the transportation of the vehicle on a truck, pretty much. This here is an aftermarket recovery point. Now, it's quite funny that the company that makes this, ARB, doesn't actually say what they're rated to, what their minimum braking strain is, or what their working load is but they do say it is suitable for 8,000 kilogram snatch recoveries. So it's a fairly hefty point and it's definitely going nowhere. This, you should not use this. If you're really stuck and you have to use it, do everything you can to make as less friction as you can in the recovery. So move as much dirt, sand, mud from in front of the tires as you can and anything that the vehicle's hung up on, just get rid of that as well, just to put as little strain as you can on this point. All right guys, second thing, in any recovery situation, only use rated recovery gear. So this snatch strap here, 8,100 kilograms. That's the minimum braking strength of the strap. This tree trunk strap here, 12,000 kilograms. Now the other thing is, is you gotta make sure that your straps are in good condition. Otherwise, this little tag on the strap means nothing. If the stitching is coming undone, if there's nicks or cuts in it, it's not gonna be as strong as it's meant to be. Now, to illustrate this point, I've got this piece of rope here. Now, this piece of rope is rated to 2.9 tons, or is it? Oh, mate, look at that cut in the rope. So what's this piece of rope actually rated to? Well, it's rated to go into the bin. It shouldn't be used. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So if you've got some straps that are old, they've got a few cuts and nicks in them, the stitching's coming undone, or they've been in the sun too long, just get rid of them because you don't want to be the reason that somebody doesn't come home from a four-wheel drive trip. It's no joke, guys. All right, last thing is what these shackles are actually rated to, because even this seems to have a fair bit of confusion around it. So the shackle I'm using today here, this soft shackle, is rated to 14.5 ton minimum braking strength. Now this shackle here is known as a 4.75 ton shackle. Now this is a piece of rigging equipment, so it has to have a working load limit. So the working load limit of this shackle is 4.75 ton. Now, if you wanna find the minimum braking strength of this shackle, you actually have to find out what the safety factor is. Now, the safety factor on rigging equipment like this is usually five or six. So to get the minimum braking strength, what you need to do is get 4.75 ton times it by five, which is the minimum safety factor for a shackle like this in rigging equipment, and then you end up with your minimum braking strength. So we end up at 23.7 ton. Now, these shackles can usually take a lot more than that. And uh, if you guys wanna check out a video of one actually getting pushed to its limits, Unsealed 4x4 did a really good video where they did a destruction test on a shackle like this. And I'm pretty sure it didn't break until 32 ton. So I'll put a link in the description down below for that video. So at the end of the day, this is rated to 14.5 ton. And in this video, we're gonna say this shackle is rated to 23.7 ton. So which is stronger? Well, it's this one. All right, now let's get into the pros and cons of both shackles. Okay, one last thing that I did forget to mention is that soft shackles are just like bow shackles. They come in a variety of different sizes. A lot of guys that are into sailing actually use shackles, soft shackles, that are rated to one or two ton. Now then you have your recovery shackles for your four-wheel driving. 14.5 ton, you can get them to be 20 ton or 30 ton even. And it's the same with the bow shackle. You can buy these for two ton applications. You can buy them for 55 ton applications. Now, obviously not all of the sizes are gonna fit through your recovery points, but there is a stack of different sizes out there. So you can get shackles, soft shackles that are stronger than this one that I have today. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the soft shackles. So these are incredibly lightweight, which is the best thing about them. If they go flying through the air in a recovery situation, they might hurt you, but they're definitely not gonna kill you. 
The other cool thing about them is they are very, very simple to use. You could almost teach a monkey to do that. The other cool thing about them is that they, since they are so lightweight, they actually float. So in a mud recovery or a river recovery, anything like that, chances of you losing one of these is pretty low. Now, let's talk about the downfall of the soft shackle. Just like any other piece of recovery strap, anything that's material in your recovery situation, it's prone to wear and tear. So virtually, our cars, four-wheel drives, have a lot of sharp objects on them. On the tracks, there's rocks and all sorts of things that these can rub up against. So they are very, very susceptible to damage. So you do have to be quite careful with them. Now, one thing that a lot of people are concerned about is the fact that when you use soft shackles on recovery points like mine here, they do have quite sharp edges. Now, the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that there's a really simple solution. Just don't use them. Use a bow shackle. Now, a bow shackle, you could rub this bow shackle all day long on this recovery point and it is not gonna wear through. Not like a soft shackle. So that is one of the biggest advantages of the bow shackle. And the thing is, as we've discussed, these are rated to 23.7 ton. So there is no way that this is gonna be the first thing to fail in a recovery situation. And this is a rated recovery point. So if this actually failed in a recovery situation, there'd be a lot of questions asked about the company that made them. So you're gonna be pretty sure that the company that made this recovery point put a lot of R&D to make sure that it can survive recovery situations. So using a bow shackle on a rated recovery point like this is absolutely no drama at all because there's nothing that can really go wrong. As long as you put the pin in, there's only one way it can go in, it's not that hard. So there you go guys, first pro of the bow shackle. Another pro of the bow shackle is the price. So I picked up this bow shackle from my local hardware shop on the way here. Four point seven five ton, twelve bucks. Don't mind if I do. So the average soft shackle for about the fourteen ton range costs usually around seventy dollars. So for the same amount of money, you could pretty much buy yourself five or six bow shackles. So when it comes to price, the bow shackle is a clear winner. So what about the cons? Well, if you have a few of these, they kind of add up and they do weigh a fair bit when you're transporting them. And that brings us to the biggest con. If this goes flying through the air in a recovery situation, if it doesn't hurt you, it might kill you. So they are very, very dangerous if they go flying. So now let's just go through a couple of different recovery situations to show where you should and shouldn't use a bow shackle. Now, as we've already talked about, there is absolutely nothing wrong with using a bow shackle on a rated recovery point like the one under my car. Now, I have a single recovery point, but if you have two recovery points on the front of your car, it's very advisable to use an equalizer strap. Now, all this strap is, it's just a short little strap, and uh, all you gotta do with this strap is get the end of your recovery snatch strap and just feed the strap through, and then you can use two bow shackles to attach this to the two recovery points, rated recovery points, on the front of your four-wheel drive vehicle. And that way the load is spread in between the two points instead of just the one. So it's a much safer way to do it. So as far as bow shackles go, just use bow shackles in a standard snatch strap recovery. There's no real point in using a soft shackle because if anything, this shackle is weaker than the shackle under the car there. So I'd much prefer use a bow shackle because there's more chance that it's gonna hold the load when you compare it to something like this that is very susceptible to wear and tear. So the reason that there's nothing wrong with using a bow shackle at the end of a snatch strap is the fact that the snatch strap is always going to be the weakest point. It's never gonna be the bow shackle. The only other thing that could break is the recovery point, but that's why we use rated recovery points as we talked about earlier. Now the real danger starts when you need to attach two snatch straps together. Now in some situations, one snatch strap won't be long enough to make sure that the recovery vehicle is well away from danger, so you might need to join two straps together. Now right now, I'm gonna emphasize this. I'm gonna show you guys what you shouldn't do, okay? You should never, ever, ever, ever do this. Okay, so why is this wrong? Well, we know that the shackle's not gonna break. It's rated to 23.7 ton. 
but suddenly it's in between two of the weakest links, the snatch straps, because the recovery points on the vehicles, if they're rated recovery points, they're going nowhere. The shackles on the vehicles are going nowhere because they're attached to rated recovery points. But the snatch straps, well, they're the weakest link. So suddenly, if one of these straps decides to break, this shackle could either go flying through the windscreen of the vehicle being recovered or through the back window of the recovery vehicle. So this is very, very dangerous and you should never do it, ever. Now I'm gonna show you guys how you can join two straps together safely. By the way guys, I forgot to mention another con of the bow shackle, the fact that this can happen. Hey, has anybody seen my pin? It was right there a minute ago, I just don't know what happened to it. Yeah, so you can quite easily lose the pin on the bow shackle. Ah, oh, and for that matter, you can actually lose the whole thing because they do sink. These don't sink. Anyway, how do you attach two snatch straps together? Well, all you have to do is get the eyelet of one and get the eyelet of the other one and put it over. Now you need to get the other end of this snatch strap and just put it through here and just pull in all the slack. Okay, so it should end up looking something like that. Now the thing is, is if you actually use a strap like this, you will never ever get these straps apart when they bind together under the forces of a recovery situation. So if you do manage to get them apart, chances are you actually damage the straps. So the best thing to do is to whack something in here that you can pull out later. Um, they often recommend a magazine, but use whatever you got in your car. So in my case, I've got this brush. This brush is very lightweight. If it goes flying, it's not gonna kill anyone and it'll be easy to get out afterwards. And then that way, when these straps bind, you can just pull the brush out and then you can just use the slack that was created from the brush being there to actually wiggle the straps apart. So never, ever, ever don't have anything in there because chances are you'll never get the straps apart. So you always have a double extension snatch strap. So this is really where the soft shackle comes into its own. There is no way that you can use a bow shackle to join two snatch straps together. While a soft shackle, these things are so light that if it hits anyone, it's not gonna kill them. So these are very, very safe. So if you ever need to join two recovery straps together, you can use the method that I just showed you, or you can just use a soft shackle. And they're so easy to use and bam, just like that, we've joined two straps together safely. So this is the only two ways that you should do it, either with the thread through method or with a soft shackle. As I've said, Never, ever, ever use a bow shackle to join two snatch straps together. Now I've mentioned a couple of times that if one of these hit you, it's not gonna kill you. The thing is you shouldn't really have anybody anywhere near a recovery situation except for the driver of the recovery vehicle and the driver of the vehicle being recovered. Besides that, everybody else should be way away from the recovery situation, at least one and a half times the distance of the straps being used. That's fairly safe. So just remember that guys, even though these won't hurt you if they hit you, you still don't want to get hit in the first place, so just keep all the bystanders well away from a recovery scenario. Alrighty, well, I showed you guys snatch strap scenarios. Now, I was gonna show you guys some winching scenarios, but um, there's no trees around here, so let's go find some trees. All right, good news guys, I've found a tree. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a winch virtually and we're gonna talk about the different loads on all of the equipment and we're gonna figure out where the weak points are. Because the thing is, when it comes to rigging anything, including your winch setups, it's all about what the weakest link is because that's the thing that's gonna break first. All right guys, I'm just gonna show you guys how to rig up your tree strap. So what you wanna do is put it around the tree you wanna choose a nice solid tree that isn't gonna virtually get pulled over. This one looks pretty solid. Okay, now this is the incorrect way to do it. This is called a choke hitch. So you do not wanna do a choke hitch because this actually lessens the amount that the strap can actually handle. So you virtually halve the amount that the strap can handle. So this is a 12,000 kilogram strap. It's only technically able to hold about 6,000 kilograms in this configuration. Okay, so what we're gonna do 
is we're just gonna grab our bow shackle and put it through both of the loops on the strap. Put the pin in, tighten it up, and then half a turn backwards. And uh, I'm just gonna pull up the tension because I wanna talk to you guys about how much this strap can actually hold when it's set up like this. Now this is a 12,000 kilogram strap. But what a lot of people don't realize is that when you loop the strap back on itself like this, you actually multiply the amount that the strap can handle. And how much by? Well, it virtually depends on the angle between the two legs of the strap. So I'll put up a little chart in the video right now that shows what the angle is and what virtually the strap can handle extra. But um, as long as it's virtually under 45 degrees, you've got 85% more strength in the strap so um i've just got this little app on my phone that allows me to measure angles so we're just gonna see what the angle is here okay so right now it was 41 degrees so in between this leg of the strap and this leg of the strap there was 41 degrees so that's less than 45 degrees. So we know that the strap is 85% stronger. So all we need to do is virtually get our calculator out. Okay, so as you can see, 12,000 kilograms times by 1.85, that's 85% there. So we've got 22.2 tons. So in this configuration, as it is now, this strap can now hold 22.2 tons. Now, as the angle increases, if you're using a bigger tree, you obviously can't put as much load on it as you can in this configuration. So if you're in between say 45 to 60 degrees, the strap is only 73% stronger. Now I'll put up a little chart in this video so you can see as the angle gets more, you got less and less capacity. But in this situation here, we got 22.2 tons. Just using simple mass calculation, you can figure it out. Now you may be wondering, why is that so? Well, because the load is now shared between the two pieces of the strap. So this is taking half of the load and this is taking half of the load. So that's why the strap can now handle more. And remember guys, don't forget your winch dampener. Okay, so this recovery setup is all good to go. So let's talk about what the strongest point of this recovery is down to the weakest piece of equipment. So as we've already discussed, the bow shackle, that's rated to 23.7 tonne. The next thing, as we already discussed, is the strap, which is now rated to 22.2 ton in that their configuration that we have around that tree. Now, what's the next thing that's the weakest? Well, it's this rope here. So this rope is rated to 8,000 kilograms. So that's the next weakest link. So in this recovery setup right here, what is the first thing that is gonna break? Well, it's actually the winch. So in the car there, I've got a 12,000 pound winch installed. So when you convert that to kilograms, it's roughly 5.5 ton. So 5,500 kilograms that it can pull. Now you gotta remember that's on the first roll because every additional roll of cable on the winch makes it weaker and weaker. So right now I definitely would not be getting 5.5 ton of pulling because there's at least two thirds of the roll still on the winch. But even so, the fact still remains that the winch is the weakest point. So virtually right now, the first thing that would break, assuming that this rope is in good condition, is the winch. The winch would stall. The winch would say, nah, sorry, mate. This is just too hard. I'm giving up. I can't do this anymore. And uh, virtually that's all that would happen. Now, if the winch somehow got superhuman power and decided it could pull more, the next thing to break after that would be the rope. But even so, the shackle and the tree strap is perfectly safe. There is no way that's coming undone. So let's switch it out now for a soft shackle. Okay guys, so exactly the same scenario, same setup, only we've changed the shackle for a soft shackle. So what's the strongest point this time? Well, instead of it being the shackle, this time it's actually the strap. The strap is the strongest point of this whole setup at 22.2 tons. Now, the next thing that's gonna break is the soft shackle, 14.5 tons. After that, 
we've got the winch rope at eight ton. And then last thing, of course, is the winch at 5.5 tons. That's when it's gonna stall. So has replacing the shackle, the bow shackle for a soft shackle made this recovery any safer? Well, not really. I mean, if the shackles had a fair bit of wear and tear, it could actually give prematurely before anything else. So personally, in this kind of winching setup, I'd rather use a bow shackle every time because I know that it's not going anywhere because they're virtually bulletproof. Now let's set up another winch recovery and go through that. Oh, look at the color coordination going on here. What we have here now is a two to one pulley system. How do you know it's a two to one pulley system? Well, if I wound in one meter of rope, the car would only move forward half a meter. So let's go through this setup again and talk about the strongest points and the weakest points, what's gonna break first in this scenario right here. Now, as usual, the bow shackle is the strongest point, 23.7 tons. After that, we've got this tree strap at 22.2 tons. What's next after that? Well, this snatch block right here has a working load of eight ton, but it's got a minimum braking strain of 16 ton. So that's the next strongest thing. Now, what do we have after that? Well, this winch rope was eight ton before, but because there's two pieces of rope going back to the car, the load is halved in between the rope. So now instead of only being able to handle eight ton, this rope, when you combine it, can now hold 16 ton. And what's the last thing? It's the winch once again. So the winch is gonna stall now, instead of at 5.5, it's gonna stall at 11 ton. So that's virtually this whole setup. The weakest link again is the winch, and after that, we've got the winch rope. Now you might be wondering, what about the recovery point under the car? Well, that recovery point under the car is rated for 8,000 kilograms, eight ton. But seeing as it only has to handle half of the load of this whole setup, there is no way that it's gonna break before the winch stalls. So you don't really have to worry about it. Okay, so uh, now let's change it over to a soft shackle and see about that. Same scenario, except now we have a soft shackle here. So let's run through this again. The strongest point of this recovery setup is now the tree strap rated at 22.2 tons. After that, it's this snatch block rated at 16 tons. Then we have the rope also at 16. And then we have the shackle at 14.5. And then we have the winch at 11 ton. So has putting this soft shackle here made this recovery any safer? Well, not really, because now it's the second weakest link of this whole setup. And if this soft shackle had a bit of wear and tear and it wasn't holding its full capacity, it could actually let go. And then this snatch block would go flying that way, which is very, very dangerous. So personally, in this situation here, I'd actually prefer to use a bow shackle as well, because you just know it's bulletproof. And then the weakest link is actually the rope and the winch, which is personally what I prefer as opposed to this snatch block going flying. So it goes with anything though, guys, like we talked about earlier, make sure your gear is in good condition because if it's not in good condition, this could break before the winch stalls, which is dangerous again. So it's all about maintenance and making sure all your gear is in good condition. There's actually quite a few people that don't think that this is a two to one pulley system. I've seen it all over forums and stuff. So the way you know it's a two to one pulley system, as I mentioned before, is that the car will actually only move half of what the winch pulls in. So I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna measure one meter and we're gonna see how far the car's moved forward. And uh, I'll put this stick here so we know where the tire was on the ground before. All right, let's pull it in one meter. Okay, so now that it's tension, that's one meter. So there is no doubt about it. The car only moved half a meter forward from where the tire starts touching the ground and I pulled in one meter of winch rope. So it is definitely a two to one pulley system.
There's just one last thing that I want to talk about as far as winching is concerned that not everybody realizes. So if you want to use your winch's full potential, you virtually have to take all of the cable off except for the last layer of cable. That's where you're going to get your full pulling power. So in this video today, we talked about the winch stalling at 5.5 tons. To get to that level, you have to have all of the cable off except for the last layer. Because what happens, as each layer gets rolled onto the drum, the winch loses more and more power. So what that means virtually is if you're stuck and there's a tree that's close, if you're really stuck, the better thing to do is to go to the tree that's a bit further away that your winch rope can still reach to, because that means your winch is gonna have more power because you would have used up more winch cable and there's less on the drum. Because as you can imagine, as more and more cable gets spooled onto the drum, the ratio of the pulley actually changes, which is why the winch loses power. So there's my final little tip for you guys. If you're really, really stuck, just maybe try putting it, pulling out a bit more cable. It might give you more power and help you get out of the situation that you're in. To summarize, soft shackle versus bow shackle. Which one's better? Well, they both have their advantages and their disadvantages. You can't beat a soft shackle when it comes to joining two snatch straps together and you can't beat a bow shackle when it comes to how hardy and durable they are. So I'm gonna be keeping both in my recovery toolkit. They're both handy for different situations. Another thing guys, make sure your recovery straps and gear is in good condition. It's very important. I know I mentioned it a few times in this video, but it is quite important. Besides that, get out there and enjoy the awesome forward driving that we have in this country. I hope you guys learned something in this video and thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Catch you later. Fourteen point five ton. After that, hang on, I've stuffed up. Seek adventure. <laughs>